Hello and welcome to the goat vlog. Aaron Shepherd, congratulations on 25,000 LinkedIn followers. Big milestone. I'm not follower orientated, if I'm honest, but yeah, great to have a, a community. Well, we've got some questions. I said I was coming around, and if anyone had any questions for me to ask you, Sam asked, are there any industries that you wouldn't recommend using influencers for? What do you look for when a brand approaches you for a more obscure industry, say construction? I would tell them to go and speak to Lee Wilcox and the guys on the tools if you want to get into construction. There's a perfect example of a really big niche community actually. It's a lot of uh, tradesmen following the same accounts, a huge amount of money in power tools and things like that, that those brands are willing to spend a lot to get there and the communities do exist. So that's a very common thing is the assumption that if something's really niche, it might not exist on social. And my experience would say that that's not true. The scale of what's available, the scale of those communities will obviously vary. I think the simple answer is there isn't an industry where it, it doesn't apply. What social gives you is the ability to find these niche communities in a much, much easier way than, than ever before. This one is from Matt. Boston Dynamics or Tesla, if you had to choose one as your next mega client? Uh, Tesla, because it's more consumer facing. I think some of the stuff that Boston Dynamics are doing is pretty crazy. I don't know what Boston Dynamics They're is. building the robots. You're in an environment there where risk taking is actively encouraged. You know, the one in a thousand shot is what you're aiming for. And you know, as anyone in a creative industry, that's a dream come true, because that's when you get to do your best stuff. This is from Al. Will China's live streaming influencer e-commerce model work here in the UK? And if so, what's currently holding it back? For those that aren't aware of what we're talking about here, that you essentially you get Chinese influencers who are performing to like 5,000 phones, simultaneously filming to different platforms. What's holding not just the UK but the rest of the world back is the platforms. The platforms in China are more advanced. The e-com ability is built into live streaming. You're watching a Facebook Live or the equivalent, it's not Facebook Live, it's be a WeChat or a Weibo. The ability to purchase is really cleverly built in. So it works much better in China than here. Not because consumer habits are different or anything like that. It's purely because the technology there is better than it is here. For anybody that wants to know what's going to happen in marketing over the next five or six years, 80% of that has already happened in China. What is the number one pain point in GOAT today? And where do you feel the largest opportunity is being created in media and commerce with the current changing landscape? I think there's huge opportunity changing landscape. We're certainly seeing that. For the last certainly five years, brands have been overspending on TV and out of home and radio and programmatic and lots of other stuff and they've been underspending massively on social and in certain areas of digital 98 percent of them if they're not radically changing their mix now they're in real real trouble in two or three years time now for someone like us that's an enormous opportunity because we're seeing brands go from spending one or two percent of their entire marketing budget on influencers to right now looking to spend 20 percent plus any major retail brand that's more than 50% offline is finished. Everything's gonna to have to move online, so there's gonna be a huge opportunity to take these retailers that have historically operated out of stores and move them online. If you can't move them online, again, they're gonna go out of business in the next six months. So it's not a question of, oh, we're thinking about trying this. It's change your entire strategy right now, full speed, or you're out of business. My absolute favourite mode of transportation at the moment, the mini skateboard, gets you from the car to people's front doors, especially if they live on a hill, not doing anything. Right, let's make this quick, come on. Yeah, I was not late, I was waiting outside politely. Let's make this quick. I went around to Aaron's today. He's gathered 25,000 followers on LinkedIn. And I asked if people wanted me to ask him any questions. And I thought I could come to you. Number one, is it problematic working on campaigns that fall into the category of obscure industries? What's an obscure industry now is my bigger question. I don't think anything's obscure now. There's so many niches 
on social media and so many niches of influencers that we can get you know it's just it's endless I've worked on so many different campaigns that have been of such a variety that I don't think I ever get phased of what the product is it was obscure to you know the general public yes but for these people with these niche you know audiences there is always a person out there for a product I would say SpaceX come to you as well as Tesla and they both want you to run a campaign if you go with SpaceX you will get to fly in their rocket if you choose Tesla you'll get to keep one of their cars from a moral point of view I pick SpaceX because I think the exploration of space is the only way as hum that humanity will be able to progress but the Tesla thing the idea of me going up in a rocket petrifies me I've seen enough films the engine doesn't click back on the rocket stalls while it's in space and that's it you're out the gravitational pull you're done virtual reality is the next big inevitable step oh, for media true or false it's just like when's it gonna happen Android have got a new VR headset oh, Oh, PlayStation you got a VR headset I don't even have a PlayStation VR headset and I'm into games because I just think it's a bloody novelty but do I believe that there is a future to it yeah but I just don't believe it's being invested in enough virtual reality the experiences that you could have compared to what you are having should be miles ahead they need to be making progress that is in line with what people want and what people are seeing you got people with disabilities and things like that that can't go places and can't do the things they want to do there's VR headsets that could completely revolutionize the way that they see the world and the way that they interact with the world all these things and all these experiences that people have like why do we not have some sort of virtual reality that you know you put on the headset you're in the bank you're speaking to your mortgage lender face to face you can't make your appointment so you're sitting in front of them you could have me round just on a headset yeah exactly like some something that can just take away all the stress and horrible things of your life hint fucking hint there's the door toodle pips Get your shoes on and be gone with it. I don't have got them on. All right. This is my character. I've got a persona to keep up. Oh. Don't get suckered in by that old rubbish. He's not always a grub. He's like a soft teddy little teddy bear at times. Right, if this doesn't get cut out, I swear to Christ. Bye. Have a lovely, have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye, soft little teddy bear, Sam. Think of this than one. Look, friends, family, loved ones, if I do fry in this car and perish today, um, I love you. <laughs>